Today, we're learning the key to realistic VFX in DaVinci Resolve, and we're gonna explore it by making a super convincing digital poster replacement with some help of some careful planning during production. Let's do it. Huge thanks to Artlist for sponsoring this video. Here's the shot that we're working with, and the idea here is that there is a poster on the wall and the guy hits the poster to kind of indicate that it's important. And we want the poster to react to the light and kind of feel like it's really there. But we weren't able to actually print out the poster. And so what we did was we used a garbage bag. So this is just a black garbage bag and we just tacked it to the wall. And we're gonna use this to make a super convincing digital poster that's gonna work much better than just putting a image on the wall. Look at this, when he hits the poster, there's all these wrinkles and interactions that actually happen with the material there. And all of that is going to come through on the digital version of this. I'm so excited. But first we need to actually make an image to put onto this poster. So we can actually design this inside of Fusion. You could also make it in whatever app you want to use, photo editing app, but we have all the tools to kind of lay this out in Fusion. So what I'll do is start with a black background and if I merge this over our original footage like this, it by default just kind of fills up the entire screen. But I can go to this background, select it and go up to image. And here I have this little check for auto resolution. If I uncheck this, then I can adjust the width and the height of this background that I'm generating and essentially make a canvas size for my poster. So I'm gonna take the height down a little bit and take the width down here. And we're just going to size this to be about the size of that poster. And so I'm just gonna kind of mess around with this until it kind of just covers the edges. It's just wide enough, something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but pretty darn close to the size of the poster. Now, really the important part here is the aspect ratio. The actual size of the poster isn't that important other than it would be good for it to be high enough resolution, but we're looking for the ratio of the width versus the height, all right? Because whatever we put on this poster, we need to be kind of this size. If we were to take a square image and kind of like squish it down to the size of the poster, then it would be squished, right? We just want to make sure that it's the kind of right proportions. So just to make things easier, I'm going to say this is 1800 by 2600. Sure. That's about right. And if we want to make this higher resolution, we could just say, you know, times two on each of these times two like that, just asterisk two. Type that in, great. It doesn't matter that it's bigger than the poster here because we're going to transform it and move it around and all that kind of stuff. So this is a background, we'll just call this a BG canvas size, sure. This is just a black background and it's being overlaid on top of our original footage here. Now we can take this and hit shift spacebar and type XF for transform. You could also just take this little icon here and drag it down if you want to but we need to make a transform and then we can size this, all right? So we have this high resolution image, but then we can just resize it. Now, why would we do that? The reason is because if we want to zoom in on this, you know, if we want to do anything where we scale this up, then it's going to be higher resolution kind of starting point when we have this canvas size be this big size. When we transform it, it's somewhat non-destructive to where we can scale it down or scale it back up or whatever, and it's going to keep the most amount of detail. So we can scale this down to be about the size of our poster. It doesn't need to be completely right, but pretty darn close. We'll move this over. To help this a little bit, I can go to the merge and take the blend down a little bit so that we can really see where this is and the size and everything. So we'll just kind of do this, something like that. Great. We're actually gonna end up masking this, so I'm gonna make it just slightly bigger. Yeah. Then we can take this merge and push the blend back up and now we have our poster. Now, depending on the color of the poster that you're adding, we would need to do a couple of extra steps here. For instance, if we have a black poster with something like, I don't know, just some text or something on it. So we'll just say, we'll just grab some text here and merge it over our background like this. I'll bring this up on the left viewer here and we'll just say uh, poster text goes here. All right, size that up whatever we want to do. If I just have something that's kind of on a black background like this, then I don't really need to worry about cutting out the edges and I don't really need to worry about his hand because what we're really going to do to add this image onto the poster is go to this merge node and select a different apply mode. So an apply mode is like the transparency mode. It determines how the pixels kind of interact with each other when they're put on top. 
So if we go to apply mode screen, what that's going to do is essentially get rid of the black pixels and just put the white pixels on there. And so anything that's black in our image is going to disappear. And so what's nice is if we make a poster that has black edges and maybe is even black under where his hand is, we don't really have to do anything that fancy. We can just make our design for our poster and put it here. It's actually a little bit easier to see if we don't have bright white text. So let's just make this like green or something. I'll just make this text a little darker maybe have it blue or something. And now when we're putting this image over, we're getting rid of the black here and we're keeping the colors, but we're also letting these bright highlights from this garbage bag shine through the, uh, the image, which gives us the kind of folded look. So instead of this text, we're going to have something like, you know, an image that goes here that's kind of inspirational, you know, somebody on a mountain or something, whatever. And then we have text here that's like inspiration or whatever, and then a little piece of text underneath it. For this image, we're gonna actually generate this with AI. Then we can make it exactly what we want. It's unique to our video. And a service that I've been using the heck out of lately is Artlet's new AI image and video generator. There are a lot of AI solutions out there. There's a lot of them that are really good. What I like about Artlist is there are all these different styles that you can choose from, and it's really easy. You don't need to set up your own models and all that stuff. You don't need to go in and type things into Discord. All you do is just go to your Artlist account and pick the style that you're looking for. So I think let's just go with something photorealistic. Sure, let's select. And then you just type in what you want to create. And let's just go with a little girl eating a massive burrito. And then you can click on this little icon right here and it will enhance your prompt. It will put all kinds of describing words and you know visual language and everything into it so that the image generator has a little bit more to work with other than a little girl eating a massive burrito. So this changed it into a cheerful little girl with gleaming eyes and a bright smile eagerly dives into a colossal burrito. The burrito wrapped in shiny foil is bursting with colorful ingredients, rich beans, fresh lettuce, ripe tomatoes. I don't have time to type all that. And so I'm just gonna hit generate. And this is going to use my credits and it's credits based. So you have a certain amount of credits that you can use. And you can see how much we've been playing with this already. I got really obsessed with uh, the idea of a grizzly bear snowboarding down a mountain. <laughs> There's all kinds of stuff we've been doing. There's our girl eating a huge, huge burrito. Let's actually try this. Let's do, let's do like three different images here. And I have this set to nine by 16 so that I can do the poster. Let's go ahead and generate a couple more variations. This will kind of generate in the background so you can actually even do other stuff while you wait. This is just one of the easiest AI tools that I've used. And the results are always really nice. They're high end, they're high resolution. It's just, what do you want? <laughs> See, I like this. She's really excited about that burrito. <laughs> and from here, you can download the image, you can add it to favorites, you can upscale it, and you can even animate it. This is what's really cool. Once you have an image that you like, you can hit animate and it will generate a video for you. So this is a brand new tool that's available and it's really great and it comes with your Artlist Pro subscription. Highly recommend checking out, there's a link in the description below, or you can click up there to get a smoking deal on this kind of thing as well as all the other amazing things that Artlist does. Footage, sound effects, voiceovers, all that kind of stuff. I don't usually work with a ton of sponsors on my channel because I only like to recommend companies that are actually good and we legitimately use Artlist all the time. So big thanks to Artlist for sponsoring this video. But I think I'm gonna go with our <laughs> radical bear. So I got this image going on earlier and I went ahead and animated it. And it's just so cool. <laughs> Look, at him, he's so happy. <laughs> he's so happy. So I have my bear still here and I can add that to the canvas here and I'll just merge this over our canvas size like that. And again, let's just take a transform node. Let's scale this up so that we can crop it nicely. I'll just crop this with a mask. We'll just use a rectangle mask like this. And we'll just adjust this to be kind of equal along the sides of the poster, leaving a little bit of room down at the bottom. I think we'll just make this a little bit shorter, move it up like that. And maybe we'll take this whole thing and move it up a little bit. Yeah, like that. So now we have some room down here and I think we're gonna call this like radical or something. So the thing about nodes that's really cool is you can kind of build a group or a composition just like with a little tree of nodes here. And so we can take this canvas and this merge and we'll just move this over here just so that we're a little bit more organized and I can merge more stuff over this. So I could take some text and merge this over like this and let's just view our composition here on the left viewer. 
let's take some text and we'll just say radical. Cool. We'll bring this down like this and we'll change to a font that looks like those kind of fonts, maybe Mongolian bitey. Is that, I don't know how to say that. We'll take the tracking up a little bit like this, take the size up. And what I want to do is line these edges up of our font with the edges of this poster, just because that's good design. Something like that. And we'll take this down radical. <laughs> Let's make this a color. We could probably pick a color from this image, maybe like the blue or the yellow or something. Let's maybe take the yellow. Yeah, I like that. Maybe make this just a little brighter. Yeah, something like that. There's radical. And then let's also add some text. I'll just copy and paste this. Merge this over like this. And we'll say um, all of the 90s in one poster. Let's just go with that. Take this size down. Take the tracking down. Yeah, something like that. And then make this white. Shoop. All right. All the 90s in one poster, we'll take that size down a little bit. Okay, so we gotta adjust the position here. Let's take this text and maybe we'll bring that down a little more. Take this text, bring it down a little more. Yeah, so there's our poster, that looks cool. <laughs> and yeah, you can see how the garbage bag idea, it's taking this fold all the way through the image and it looks like there's actually stuff happening to the image. In fact, when he moves it around, we even see the little wrinkles kind of going through the image like that. So helpful. So, so good for realism. So the reason this works so well is because we planned. We planned for this during production. This would be way less convincing if he was just pointing at a blank wall. Having something in the frame that kind of gives a sense of realism that's, you know, like half of the object that you're trying to put in helps so much. So when you're shooting stuff that you're going to add visual effects to, make sure to think about it beforehand. If you're going to replace something, how can you make it easier for yourself in post? How can you make the effect more convincing? The reason this works is because he's tapping on that plastic and the plastic's kind of moving and rippling. And when we combine that image with it, it's going to look like that image is actually there. This is next level stuff. And it's pretty easy if you do your job during production. Now we're not quite done. There are a couple things that we want to do with this. One is that this is a little bit too bright. The reason I know is because everything else in this shot is just a little darker. Even the highlight on this clock, if I look down here, it has the red, green, and blue values right there. And I were to mouse over this, our red, green, and blue values are 0.79, all right? So even right here where it's really bright, it's like 0.79. That means that like the brightest thing ever here, if this is a specular highlight, the brightest thing ever should be like 0 0.7, 0 0.8, something like that. Whereas this, this white right here, if I look at this, we'll see this is 0.79, that's great, but this is 0 0.8, 0 0.82, so this is a little bit bright. Also, this poster is not going to be as bright as something emitting light, and so it should really be darker than that still. So one thing we could do is we could take this merge and we could just blend this down a little bit, and that's going to, that's actually going to do a pretty good job. And so I want to blend this down until it just feels like it matches. Okay, so I can take this down and I bet it's going to be 0.7 or so somewhere in there. That's also going to help some of these brighter parts and these little highlights and these folds and everything kind of shine through a little bit. So here's kind of before it's really bright and here's after. So it just helps it kind of fit into the image a little better. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So we have this looking pretty good, except for this unfortunate business that his fingers are over the image, which is a dead giveaway. That's not going to work. So we could uh, just mask this and then animate the mask. But that's, you know, a, you know, a decent amount of work. And so it'd be really nice if we can automate this in some way. We could also try and do a magic mask. But let's just let's just look at that real quick. Magic mask, by the way, is just in the paid version of Resolve. And it's really nice because you can select things quickly, but it kind of depends on what you're selecting. So this will select his hand really great, but it doesn't really let you select in between the fingers very well. And it just doesn't really give you the greatest selection. So you can get it closer, but it kind of wants to select the parts in between the fingers. And so it's kind of problematic. So in this case, we're actually going to do something called a difference keyer. Now, shift spacebar, difference, 
What this does is it compares two images and it gets rid of the pixels that are the same in between the two images. So what we could do is take our original footage here. I'll just copy this because it's just a little easier to understand what's going on. We'll take the original footage and bring that into the background. And then we'll also take a copy of this and we'll put it through a time speed node. And what this time speed node will do, I'm just bringing this up here in the second viewer, is that's gonna let us freeze frame this. So let's freeze frame this later when his hand isn't over it. We'll just hit freeze frame. So now this is going to stay with that frame the entire time. And we can plug that into the green input of the difference keyer like this and then hit two on the keyboard. And then it's gonna compare these images and it's going to cut one out. Now, I always forget which one is which. I actually need to switch this, control T like this. There we go. And now we have the hand that's being kind of cut out. Now, uh, if we look at the alpha channel and hit A, we can see there's lots of noise here. That's not great. So what we can do is go to this difference keyer and we can adjust these levels here. And as I push this up and kind of adjust this contrast and kind of play around with this until we get a good result. And what I'm looking for is nice selection on these fingers without it being too noisy, something like that. Now, this doesn't have to be totally perfect. I can blur this just a little bit. It just needs to be good enough for the illusion to sell, you know, so we could push this up just a touch, something like that. So now everything else doesn't really matter. But right here over the poster, we're going to have a great selection for his fingers. Let's get out of alpha channel and look at that nice selection on the fingers. That's so much better than what we were getting with magic mask. And now I can just take this and let's merge this key over everything else and look what's going on. Look at that. That's working pretty well. We can even take a rectangle mask and limit this to be on the poster. It's not really going to hurt anything being over everything else, but just in case we want to do something else tricky sometime, let's take this rectangle mask and plug that into our merge just to limit what's happening there. Just put this right over the poster. Cool. And again, we're getting away with a lot because it's over black and we just aren't really going to see the problems there. But now let's switch over to our edit page so that we can play this back in real time. And I'm going to go up to playback and make sure I have render cache smart selected. And that's going to let this cache in the background. I'm going to have this red bar. And once it turns blue, then it'll be able to play back in real time. So we'll just let it do that for a minute. And now we can play this back and look at our effect. <laughs> it's so awesome. So he hits that and it's pretty good. It's pretty good. We could get a little bit picky. There is a little bit of kind of black here in the motion blur, but overall it's really, really good. And I think is a very convincing effect. <laughs> you can see it kind of like moves the poster. That's what sells this effect is this interaction when he hits that poster. And we see all the little reflections move and everything in this poster. Oh. You would just never guess that this is a fake poster. It's so great. I love this effect so much. We used this years ago in one of our movies and I've been dying to show it to you guys. We finally have a really good chance to do that. <laughs> this is so much fun. So yeah, that's how you can make your own motivational poster. <laughs> and the one last thing that I want to do is take this and just soften this image a little bit. So let's just take this whole thing and just run it through a blur. And I just want this to be just a little blurry, just a little bit, just to take the edge off. That's going to work nice, just so it's not so crisp. Here's before and here's after. We're just making it so it fits into the image. You know what I mean? And the great thing about doing this in post is we can switch this out at any point with any kind of poster we want. We could even do something crazy like switch it out with a video version of this bear. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now it's a video poster. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. You know, add a little dynamic zoom and then boom, we're ready to uh, get inspired by some Capri Sun or something like that. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. So if you're looking for some great AI tools for your videos, as well as stock clips and music, Artlist is the place to be. There's a screaming deal. There's also a link in the description, okay? All right, <laughs> all the radical, <laughs> I dropped my pen. I'm so smooth. <laughs>